in the broadest sense, a legacy is something that's handed down from generation to generation. We hear of the legacy of slavery, the, perhaps the legacy of wars are some examples of legacies spoken of, but those are not so positive because it does involve pain and suffering. We can also speak of family legacies and national legacies. Uh, this tends to emphasize of what might have been left to the generation. Some good things, maybe great laws of a nation that kept the nation knit together. At its core, a legacy refers to something done in an earlier time, and it is about the past, which actually has impact on the present or on the future. I want to give you a diction, uh, dictionary, to get the words out here, a dictionary term for and definition for legacy. It's kind of interesting. It only shows one facet of legacy, but it talks about a legacy in a garden that you will never see. So it grows up, it produces fruit, but what you did, your role was planting the seeds. Uh, Generally, though, to make it a little more specific for us, talk about youth planning a legacy. The young people in the congregation here are, whether they realize it or not, are planting their own legacies. It might be the diligence in their education, how that will pay off later. Things they're doing now may turn into work, I know personally I learned to use a magnet and identify copper and aluminum as a kid to make some extra money way, way back when and never thought much more about it until I quit teaching college and picked up a magnet again and have used that in the recycling industry. So you never know where these things may pay off or not pay off. But your health, how well you take care of yourself, if you... Do enough push-ups every morning? <laughs> I got their attention now. So that you can be strong later in life. Or if you are encouraged maybe as a youth to take dancing lessons, and we know who have developed that legacy, because if you go to a maybe a church dance, and I remember this back in Ambassador College days, there were those who obviously missed that legacy because they would be dancing the old pump handle thing. <laughs> I'm teasing a little bit, but I think you get my point that what we do in our youth will have a large impact of the kinds of things we are able to do as adults. Christians are creating their legacy for eternity. We are all leaving our own legacy for this lifetime, of course, and for the one to come. What we're doing now, either good or bad, is and will be our individual legacy. Galatians 6, verse 7, is a statement in the Bible that backs up my points today very, in a very foundational way. Galatians 6 and verse 7, Paul writes, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Don't fool yourself, people, he's saying. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Then an interesting scripture that adds a further dimension to this concept of legacy, especially as it applies to Christians. Matthew 19, verses 28 and 29. Matthew 19, verse 28. And the disciples were wondering, <laughs> and if I could paraphrase, they're saying, well, what is, 
What do we get out of this? What will be our legacy? Verse 28, so Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that in the regeneration, in the resurrection period, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me, very specific here, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Now here is a specific legacy for the 12 apostles of Jesus Christ. They're going to be used in a unique way. Verse 29, and then it broadens, he broadens the scope here. And everyone, everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake, he says, shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. And parallel scriptures talk about receiving things not only in that future kingdom of God, but now. So it's really important to pay attention to the kind of legacy we're leaving by what we're doing day in and day out. I'm going to give you two points on how to leave a legacy as a Christian, as someone who aspires to eventually be in the kingdom of God. And this will actually have a lot to do with where you end up, because God has a specific role in mind for us. He's called us to offices, if you please, to opportunities in his kingdom. Let's go to Hosea 20 and verse 12. The first of two points here, it's very simple. I'm just going to read the opening phrase here. If you want a really great legacy in the future, Hosea 10 and verse 12, sow for yourselves righteousness. Remember I read from Galatians 6 verse 7 that whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Well, here's the first point that we need to really believe, and if we believe it, we will be motivated to do something about it. Sow for yourself righteousness. What is righteousness? It has to do with living according to the laws of God and to the will of God. Now, my second point, again, quite simple. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 6. How do we sow our righteousness if we want to create a legacy? Well, this answers that. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Could I reword that a little bit and say, he who doesn't pay attention to his legacy won't have much of a legacy? But let me continue reading. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Sow righteousness bountifully. Now, I want to add one little more script or one point here that's not so small, but it's Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 10. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 10. This goes along with, with the qualitative aspect of this second point about sowing bountifully the righteousness that we sow. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 10, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. That's too late. When you take your dirt nap, you've already written your legacy. And then... Revelation 22 and verse 12 will be a final 
scripture along with these points to keep in mind. Remember, I said, <laughs> sow righteousness and sow it bountifully. That's the way we can build a legacy as Christians. But here in Revelation 22 and verse 12, one of the final statements we find in the word of God, Christ says, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give everyone according to his work. Brethren, our legacy will be our legacy. And we've already seen that Christ adds so much if we to what we do because we will be given eternal life and our opportunities in that unending kingdom of God will in some ways be determined by what we do now. I mean, we have a role, but God has a role that will just add to our legacy and brimful and running over, and we can't top that, but it's part of what we've been promised. So let's remember, our legacy is our legacy, good or bad. And with God's help, let us make our legacy the best, the very best that we can.